Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance. So sit back, relax and enjoy some satisfying stories. You want a doctor's note? Okay. This story begins last night when I thought I was suffering from severe allergies. I'm rubbing my hands and going about my normal business for a closing shift. The store closes and all is well and I come home to get some much needed rest. Flash forward to 6.30am this morning and a very sleepless night. This girl has swollen eyes and a runny nose. Nothing is well here and my boyfriend mentions pink eye to me. I've never in my life had pink eye before so I don't even know for sure. I shoot my professor an email saying I'm missing class in favour of hitting the doctor's office up when I wake. 10am rolls around and I am still plagued with the swollen eyes and impossible congestion. I text my assistant manager on the way to the doctors, saying I might have pink eye and that she should find coverage for tomorrow, because most contagious quarantines are 24 hours. In the time I am waiting for her to answer, pink eye is confirmed and I am prescribed meds. Whilst waiting on the meds, my assistant manager calls me and asks me why she needs coverage for the shift tomorrow. Did he say not to come into work? Pink eye isn't highly contagious if you don't touch anything. Well, number one, we handle food, and number two, yes, it is highly contagious, and I don't want to get the rest of our staff sick. I tell her this as kindly as possible, and when she still refuses, I pull out the documented fever. Still a no-go, and she asks for a doctor's note. Fine then, I'll get you a doctor's note. After grabbing those meds, I head back to the doctor's office and ask for a note. I explain that my assistant manager needs this note and proceed to explain that I handle food slash beverages in my line of work and come into contact with many people. She immediately makes this confused face like, why would you even need a note for this then? Just excuse it. Yes, me too lady, me too. I then ask her how many days I need for recovery and she asks, do you want to go back Sunday or Monday? I said screw it, I was initially going to miss one day of work to get over the contagious period but the assistant manager just wanted the doctor's note. I told her Monday, she signed the form and handed over with a lovely smile. I thanked her and sent it to my assistant manager who now has to find coverage for two of my shifts instead of just the one. Don't ask me to come into work with some sickness I can pass on to other peers or customers. I will fight back. Do you know what would have been the best thing to do? Rub your eyes before you hand over the note to the assistant manager, just to rub it in a bit. It wasn't on the load plan. In the 80s, I was in the army and stationed in Germany. When I originally arrived at my platoon, we had a great platoon sergeant and a terrific platoon leader. Our platoon was number one in the whole battalion for pretty much everything, and life was good. Fast forward about a year and we got both a new platoon sergeant and a new platoon leader within weeks of each other. But we figured life would go on and seeing as how we were already the best in our battalion, things should continue on pretty much as they were. Unfortunately, the new crew had other ideas. For some reason, they felt that although we were the best, that they were going to break us down and make us better. Their thoughts being we had obviously been ineptly led by nincompoops. We understood that everyone wants to make their mark when they get to a new unit, but calling us all to a formation and telling us we were essentially worthless and weak didn't have the intended effect. After running us around for a month, basically attempting to change all of the things we did that worked into their version of a team of monkeys playing football, it was time to go to the field. In those days, we had the old school army jeeps that towed a trailer full of all the fun things that we took to the field, and of course, some things we probably shouldn't. 
To combat this problem, and to promote good organization, we were required to have a load plan. Each box was assigned a spot in the trailer and was labeled as to its contents. The rule was, if it isn't on your load plan, it isn't going in the trailer. This was rigorously enforced by all of the newly promoted sergeants, who had nothing better to do than tell all of us minions to scurry about and attempt to earn their praise. We, of course, tried to stay as far away from any wood with too many stripes and flood to the motor pool, only to make brief appearances when absolutely necessary. For a little background, our new LT was prior service enlisted and went to college on an ROTC scholarship, got his commission and re-entered the military as a freshly minted second lieutenant. We all figured that he'd already experienced bad leadership, so having the benefit of being on the receiving end of said bad leadership, he'd know how things were supposed to be done. And we were wrong. He had the worst case of, do as I tell you, not what I do, that I've seen in a very long time, and he seemed to take great pleasure in our misery. For our first foray into the field led by our intrepid leaders, we were explicitly told that if the army didn't issue it, we weren't allowed to take it with us. This included any clothing that was civilian in nature and could keep us comfortable and warm. It also included any food items that were actually edible, because sea rations were good enough. Spoiler, they weren't, and all of you sissies that complain about MREs, or meals ready to eat, can try eating ham and eggs out of a can. As we were loading up, I was called into the orderly room, where a fairly substantial footlocker was sitting open. Inside was quite an assortment of snack cakes, crackers, sausages, and all manner of other goodies, all of which were prohibited. Of course, since this locker was owned by the lieutenant and the platoon sergeant, it was considered official equipment, and quite necessary. Just as I walked into the room, they slammed the lid and placed a padlock on the box, assuming, incorrectly, that I hadn't just seen the Ark of the Covenant of junk food. I was then ordered to take the top secret box of delights out to my jeep and stow it with everything else I was tasked to keep track of. Shortly after I found room in my trailer, one of our sergeants, an E5 that was only a sergeant because they either had to promote him or get rid of him, asked my co-driver to show him the load plan. Remember, this is the official document saying that what can and cannot be in your trailer. After a thorough inspection, the wayward box that wasn't supposed to be there, officially, was located and he was asked what the box was and what was in it. My buddy told the sergeant that he had no idea what was in the box or how it got in the jeep and was ordered to take it out of the trailer and deposit it in the basement or we would both be subjected to some sort of punishment, befitting our attempt at smuggling some sort of deadly contraband. Since nobody asked me, I just remained respectfully quiet, and then I, being the obedient soldier that I was and wanting to follow orders, picked up the box and found a nice dark corner to deposit it in so that it would be safe and waiting for us upon our return. When we got to the field, the lieutenant and platoon sergeant started inquiring about their box, so I told them that Sergeant Doofus made us take it out of the trailer. According to the complaining parties, that precious box, officially, contained all manner of equipment that was totally necessary for us to successfully complete all of our missions in the field. Thankfully, we seemed to miraculously have a second set of everything that was supposed to be kept in the box, so the day was saved. So, you can say that this is the story of how, any time we went into the field from then on, there was always a bit of extra space for the odd box of creature comforts, and nobody's load plan was checked at a microscopic level anymore. I wonder if he ever told them where it was and if he ever went back to eat it or something, but probably not. Go on lunch? Okay. This happened a few minutes ago. I work in a retail pickup department. Supervisor wanted me to finish an order and go to lunch. 
Customers showed up to pick up their orders. Nobody was back there to take them out, so I stepped up and got it ready. Two more show up. Supervisor shows up to tell me to get back to my original order, who wouldn't be there to pick up for at least one more hour and then go to lunch. As she says this, someone else shows up to pick up their order. But I just keep managing my, not going to pick up for an hour order. Two people are back there and four people are picking up, but I was told what to do and I did it. As I walked out for my lunch, another person showed up for a pickup. Three angry customers must not be a big issue to my supervisor, who often tries to be overly bossy. Today is one of those days. My last day here is in a week. If you want me to ignore customers so that you can feel like you're in charge, so be it. When a child outsmarts you. My kids go trick or treating. We live in a great candy neighborhood, so every year they come home with 100 to 200 pieces. When they're young, we tell them that Santa brings every boy and girl a present on Halloween, and the more candy you leave him, the better present he'd leave in exchange. When the kids get old enough to realize Santa is a hoax, that's when we start paying in cash, 25 cents per piece. Did this with our oldest two and it worked great. They'd give up about three-fourths of their candy and buy a toy. Our third child is eight this year, so called us out on the Santa thing. We explained the new deal. He said, So then it's my money and I can buy whatever I want with it? A new skateboard even? Anything? You bet. Swear? Yep. He goes and brings us all his candy, even every Kit Kat, his favorite. I was in shock, but he'd been saving up for a skateboard for a bit, so must have decided to go all in to push his savings over the edge. Getting all the sugar out of his room was the best case scenario, easy as $31.75 I'd spent all week. Next day, I brought the candy to work. Then we went to Walmart after school and the kids ran to pick out their stuff. We met at the checkout. There's my son who has raided the clearance aisle and found 200 Kit Kats for $10. I started to tell him to put it back, but he said, What? You said I could buy whatever I wanted. You swore. I want my candy back then. His candy had already been eaten by my co-workers, and I did swear, and we put a lot of emphasis on the importance of keeping your word. So, my son has almost twice as much candy as he would have from just keeping his trick-or-treating, and a new skateboard. I don't know who's more ticked, my wife that this plan backfired so horrifically, or his older brothers that they never thought to do this. As soon as I saw 200 Kit Kats, I was expecting him to resell them back and get a more of a profit and just keep doing it and making money, but yeah, I don't think that would work. <laughs> I did it for the children. Wholesome compliance? So I work in finance and my bosses are quite wealthy. They're humble and kind people, but sometimes it makes me uncomfortable how little money means to them, and yet they can be very cheap sometimes. For example, a $43,000 fence for the house they're building from the ground up? No problem, here's a check. Versus, I need a new desk because half the drawers are broken and the finish is worn off? It's fine, clients don't care what your desk looks like. So it's Halloween, the only holiday I actually enjoy, and I come into work planning on running across the street in a while to buy candy for the kids. One of my bosses gives me $20 and says, Here, go to the store across the street and get $20 worth of candy. Perfect, $20 is gas for the week. Now, one of the reasons I love Halloween is because typically candy goes on sale the day of in certain stores when they realize they're still overstocked, and an even better price tomorrow for my sugar gluttony. 
I go to the store and it's actually buy one get one free. So I buy double what I normally would and what my boss expected. I come back into work and the look on his face is priceless. He gets a little annoyed because he's cheap and obviously I could have spent less. So I reminded him he didn't say, here's $20, get some candy, but instead, here, get $20 worth of candy. So now kiddos are going to be getting double the candy and my boss can't be mad because I followed his directions exactly. Although now I'm on copy duty for the day, which is fine. I did it for the children. Sorry if it wasn't malicious enough. Yeah, but who spends $43,000 on a fence? That's a big fence, surely. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.